Hello my dudes and welcome back to the Steampunk Saga. Last episode, we took a deep dive into how to oxidize copper. Now this episode, we're going to be looking into the create way of gathering ore. Using the crushing wheels and a little bit of washing, we can get a renewable source of iron for absolutely free. Plus also we're going to look into ways to get gold, copper, zinc as well. But before we do that, I did promise you guys that we were going to develop the basin. So let's jump in and I can show you what I've done over the weekend. Now all of this took an insane amount of time and I did say I was going to develop and terraform the entire basin. But just developing the cave entrance over here on its own took almost the entire weekend. But it's really cool now and we've added loads more room to build in here. It's going to be amazing. We've also added a way for us to get the train running through here. Now, when I talk about train, I've kind of loosely been trying to build with an idea that we're going to have to put a train through this colony in the end. And I think it's time I showed you guys the route we plan to take with the train. So this path is going to become a railway track, maybe a railway station. And the train is going to come along here over this bridge above the chasm. It's going to tunnel underneath the mountain and then come out and come across this side of the basin. Then it's going to swoop all the way around the basin in a big old loop before sliding on past our mine over here and then it's going to cycle past these residences as well. It's going to come down around in front of the town hall and then it's going to loop back to its original position. Pretty exciting, but before we get into rails, we're going to have to get loads of iron because rails cost loads of iron. So let's jump in and take a look at how we're going to do that. So we have a pretty amazing create powered cobble gen. The way to get iron in create is you take the cobblestone, you use it with the crushing wheel. That turns it into gravel. Okay, great. Then you use the gravel in a washing setup. A fan behind some water. This washes the gravel and there's about a 12% chance you'll get one iron nugget. That's very slow, but if we're crushing loads and loads of cobblestone into gravel and washing it in the background, it's going to net us over time a huge amount of iron. Now iron's only one of the metals we're going to need, so there's actually, using mine colonies, another genius way we can get renewable other metals. Take a look, let's use gold as an example. So we're going to want gold nuggets. Now you can get gold nuggets by crushing tough. I don't know what you're thinking, okay, yeah, but we don't want to have to go and mine all of that tough. Well, we don't actually need to. Using the crusher from mine colonies, we can actually turn cobbled deep slate into tough. That's pretty amazing. And if our miners are digging low enough, they're going to be gathering up loads and loads and loads of cobbled deep slate. And honestly, cobbled deep slate doesn't really have any other use. We don't use it in any of the builds, even though deep slate is one of my favorite materials. So that sounds like a really solid way to move forwards. Now, if we're going to do this, we're obviously going to need the Crusher's Hut. So let's go over to the university and see what we need to get the Crusher in action. Okay, amazing. Now, as I suspected, all of our research has been done because yeah, over the weekend, man, Ninkus, you don't even know how long it took me to develop that cave entrance. But I'm glad I did because I think it looks really cool. Now the Crusher's Hut is down technology and I think, is this it? Yeah, rocking roll. So we need 64 stone. That's super easy to grab. And while we're at it, well, it'd be great if the miner could get more ores as well. And that only requires 32 iron ore. So it's been a while. The miners have been going crazy, I hope, in the background. Let's go and see what's going on over there because we might have the iron ore to do both those researches. Oh, now hang on a sec. Looks like Ambriel has some problems. Red cogwheel means this miner isn't working. What's her problem? Can we fix it? No, it wasn't baked potatoes, I hope. Okay, torches. Ah, right, that makes sense. Yeah, to make a torch, we need charcoal. To burn the charcoal, we're going to need to develop our stone smeltery. And I imagine this red cogwheel over here at our main mine, Salem Douglas, right same thing. Yeah, torches. So they're the real bottleneck. Well, we have actually researched the stone smeltery. That's what we said in motion last episode. It's only level zero, so we can probably build this up to level one. Oh yeah, look at this. One furnace, four racks. Super simple. Now we're gonna give the black, no wait, the sawmill, 
the recipe to actually make these racks. So it should be a crafting recipe. We'll go for rack. There's quite a few of these, but the one from Mine Connolly is pretty simple. And there we go, yeah, amazing. So now also we need a furnace. Who crafts a furnace? I think this might actually be the mechanic. No, the stonemason, and that makes sense because it's just cobblestone, right? Okay, perfect. Something for you to do, Sheila. Pretty basic furnace. No, we don't want to use infested cobblestone. That's not a good idea. So we'll find regular cobble and just drag this over. Man, it'd be much easier if I had some in my backpack. So here we go. How's it going, my wonderful researchers? Come over here, technology. And yeah, we're going to put in the rocks. Yeah, the stone for the crusher. Very important part of our ore generation setup. So maybe there's a civilian one we can do in the background because, yeah, it's bad to neglect these. And in fact, oh, this is quite an important one. If we can grab three books, we can do higher learning and grab a school. Sounds pretty good. So over here in civilian, we're going to enter school and amazing. This is quite important because when we upgrade the university, it comes with a free school. In fact, I think it's that block over there just floating in the sky. There should be one over this side as well for like the library, but I don't see it. Ah, well, maybe it's somewhere else. Now, why stop there with the stone smeltery? I have a feeling that getting us to level two is only going to cost like a few. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, one furnace. Get this to level two. Now, of course, we do still have a problem. We don't have enough dudes. It can be tempting to bring a knight over and employ them in a different building, but when you do that, you remove the house that the knight was in. And what you end up with is a homeless colonist, which is a really bad place to be. What I will say though is four couriers is very generous for our colony. So I think maybe we can borrow one of these dudes and I reckon Dorka Stormweaver, yeah, get on over here. You're gonna be our stone smelter. Oh my God, whoa, look at that burgundy. I love that. Is that, are those mahogany robes? Wow, that face though. Very serious, angry face. And those eyebrows, wow, what a monobrow. So we want to give this guy a recipe to smelt charcoal. He's going to need oak logs to do that. There we go. And that creates charcoal. Amazing. But he does actually need a fuel to actually start the charcoal process. So we're going to make his fuel charcoal. Why not? Boom. Now to do that, we are going to need to kickstart the process and give these guys a bit of charcoal to begin with. But with that in motion, We'll get the charcoal now, which uh, I guess the miners can actually use themselves to make their own torches. Here we go, 32 and 32. Smelt this up into a nice dollop of charcoal. Lovely stuff. Let's go and get this into the warehouse, get our colonists working again. And it really is cool to fix these problems. Mine Colonies always gives you something to do to micromanage things around your colony. It's really cool. Now, where's my clipboard? This looks like it doesn't have that many requests. Yeah, it looks like most of the guards' armor requests have been fulfilled. The only one that hasn't is the guard tower that can't actually use chainmail. That's Rory Bear. And I think he's in the mine and the mine guard tower is only level one. Now check this out. I put a, another guard tower up here on top of our entrance to the massive chasm. The reason I did this is because we need loads more space. We're going to need loads more of these guard towers all around. And in fact, as colony sizes go, we've got way less guards than we should have at this point. We're not too bothered because when raids happen, I can kind of come in myself and help out with the raid and we don't have many problems, but as soon as we start getting really big raids, like we did in the Byzantine series, oh my god, those were huge. We're really going to need a massive army of guards. Now you might have noticed actually, we've had to add in loads more transportation for our dudes. If you come up here, we had to get a way for our builder to go up there to be able to actually build the guard tower. Also, we'll need a guard in there. So I added a staircase here that goes up like this. 
but these staircases are actually quite an ordeal to craft. So I thought, you know what, let's just go for ladders. Colonists actually do love ladders. Ladders are really, really efficient for your colonists to use. They worked really well in my first Mine Colony series, and as you can see, we've got these dotted around all over. Nice bit of buildable land up here. Wait, what, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, look at this! A banana slug? Oh my god, it looks delicious and disgusting. Ugh. So anyway, what was this episode about? Well, it was about generating ore using Create, a renewable way for us to get iron on the colony. We can't rely on the mines 24-7 and Create has a great way to do it. Now, this area over here by the airport is actually made to measure. I calculated how big this size was. And I used the area we had to design a schematic and a blueprint for our new building. Now this is pretty exciting because basically, yeah, if you look at our airport, the schematics cannon does not like mine colony shingles. But on the flip side, if you get a builder to build a create building, they'll often mess up and break your create machines. So we had a bit of a dilemma. What are we gonna do? So what I've done is I've combined the building into two parts. Number one, we're gonna go to the build tool find my custom pack here it is and we have something called the crusher exterior very cool it's a very big building this is going to need its own power source as well so we've included a giant windmill very cool and again patreon and youtube members can find all of my schematics that i've developed for the series over on our discord there's a link to that in the description So here we go, this is within our boundaries, I believe. Yeah, looking pretty good. Doesn't clip with the walls at all. Yeah, this is quite a nice place to put this building down. Okay. But as you can see, this is an empty building. There are no create machines in here. What's going on? And yeah, that's because this build is split into two parts. This is the exterior which our builder was gonna build from Mine Colonies. The materials are more of the same that we used to build our player house, very simple. Wait, what's this? What's this yellow stuff? Banana slug slime? What the hell is this used for? I can make banana slug slime block. It it has no use. Is it a food? No, it's just slime. What the hell? Come on, dude, just slime it at my colony. Please, can you slime somewhere else? Ugh, well, I'll hold on to it, because it might be useful. Now we're going to grab our builder's goggles because we need to see the blueprint that we have here already to match the schematic. So we're going to use the schematics cannon to actually build the interior. If I right click, this is the Crusher Hut interior. Now placing these is a little bit more awkward than um, the Mine Colonies build tool, which is much, much more superior. But as you can see, if we jimmy this around a little bit, then push it back this way, Oh my god, yeah, it's so awkward to use. But yeah, this slots in perfectly. So the schematics cannon does the interior with all the machinery. And the builder takes care of the exterior. Oh man, this is going to be super good to build. A schematics cannon and Lord Farquaad, a combined effort. Now, because Lord Farquaad thinks the interior is empty space, we do have to stagger this. Lord Farquaad has to build first, then the schematics cannon puts down the final bits. But that all seems pretty straightforward. Let's go and watch the time lapse. So here we go. This is a bit of an experiment because this is the first time I've ever split a build like this between the builder and the schematics cannon. And I left the schematic in place from Create so you guys can see the actual building getting built around it and have an idea of how this whole thing works. It took a long time for the build to actually get this building built because yeah, we're in the far reaches of the colony all the way up here by the airport. And Lord Farquaad has a long old way to walk. Now we did give him some stairs and ladders to get up to here, but he still had a bit of a problem. And midway through, 
He went missing, so we had to go and find out what was going on. And guess what? Yeah, looks like he's stuck over here by the ladder. I don't know what him and Toodles are doing here, but yeah. Once him and Toodles had finished their rendezvous, he did get back to work, and yet, yeah, because we've used the same materials for most of the build, most of the buildings I design go up really, really, really quickly. So it is a real joy to watch this happen. However, later in the build, he did stall again, just as he was finishing the roof and moving on to the windmill. So we had to take another look around the colony to see if we could find out where he was and what he was doing. And for some reason, he'd gotten lost in a cave and it looks like he's going off on an adventure. I don't know where he's going. But he did eventually find his way home and got this windmill finally built. It's very big, we're gonna have to add our own sails and the windmill mechanism, but the whole building's done. Let's get in game and check it out. So that's phase one done, the builder is complete and the building is, well, yeah, mostly complete. It's just this central bit now that we have to fill in. And that's where our old friend the schematics cannon comes into play. Now we're gonna throw a book in here and take a look at what's required because there's some spicy new things from Create that we're going to be using inside this build. Now as luck would have it, we have the means to get all of these materials, but it's pretty simple. There's some basins, some brass funnels, some brass tunnels. So we're going to need to use our alloy maker to make us some brass. There's also some chutes, some cogwheels, gearboxes, as you'd expect. But this is the weird new item we're going to use, the item vault. So take a look. The item vault is basically like a giant jumbo chest. With the difference that you can't manually open it up and take things out or put things in. But you can attach these amazing andesite funnels and even brass funnels to pull what you want in and out of them. So they're a great kind of central storage for things you want to automate. The brass tunnel is also pretty important. It lets you filter items that are going through a conveyor belt. It's great for splitting things off and putting them where you want them. And last but not least, the brass funnel. So the brass versions of the andesite things are the same, but they can put more stuff out and you can add filters that let you control what is coming in and going out of these things. Okay, pretty cool. And like I said, we've got the means to make all of this pretty simply. The item vault isn't too hard to make. The recipe is just iron sheets and a chest. Very, very simple. So I'm going to get crafting these up. And so there we go, that's all of the materials we've gathered, and this should about cover it. Looking at the book, yeah, I think I've got everything we need. Anyway, let's put the gunpowder into the schematic cannon. It's ready to rock. Make sure the printer is set to, yep, don't replace solid blocks. We want it to keep everything as it is. So let's get the ball rolling. So here we go, the Crusher's Hut interior. So the process for this is pretty simple. It takes either the cobblestone or the tuff, grinds it up via these massive crushing wheels that we're gonna build in the back. The tuff is crushed and turned into potentially one of four nuggets. 
all of those nuggets go into the item vault that then splits them to the four different types of nuggets. Those get pressed in the mechanical press and at the end we have the finished ingots. This should be super amazing and I can't wait to see this in action. Boom, so fast forward and we filled in the windmill. Now this is the biggest windmill we have in the colony. These stairs are nine sets of stairs all diagonally. That's a huge amount of windmill sails because we have to connect somehow some power to our crushing setup. Now the way to do that is going to be, yeah, over here. Basically the power comes in via this shaft and this powers the whole thing. But we need to make sure it's rotating in the right direction. So down go the shafts, we'll use a vertical gearbox here. A couple of these just for good measure. There we go. And if it's going the wrong direction, we can change that by just adding another gearbox somewhere along. Now nothing in this factory is speed dependent, so we don't need to worry about convoluted gear setups to make this go quicker. We can simply just bring the bearing over here via a vertical gearbox back into action. And now this is the windmill bearing, so if we right click on this, that should have started things. Let's get outside now and see what this looks like. Okay, here we go. How big is this bad boy? Oh my god, yeah, it's the biggest windmill. We could even make it bigger. Oh man, that's spinning so quick. That's nuts. This is going to generate loads of power for our crushing setup. And this thing's going to need loads of power because it's got to power these crushing wheels. Now, as you can see, these crushing wheels are rotating the wrong way. This conveyor belt is rotating away from the... Oh my god, what happened here? Okay, yeah, so sometimes the game breaks when it tries to put down item vaults, but that's not a problem because if you put it down manually, it kind of should fix things. Yeah, there we go, that's all good to go. So we'll dig away over here, put another gearbox to make things go the right way, and this should all work. The stones come in here, they get split four ways to, to give an even load across all of the crushing wheels. Then the crushing wheels start crushing, drop it onto this conveyor belt that pipes it into the item vault. The item vault, as you can see, separates between these iron nuggets, copper nuggets, zinc nuggets, and gold nuggets. They get stamped into bars and come in down the bottom. Now the whole thing runs off of tough, and we've gathered loads of tough in the background from all of our mining. So let's go and grab some and show you this in action. Now also, something I wanted to try out was a degree of automation. Imagine if you can pipe out of a post box into a conveyor belt. That way we can get the mine colonists to automatically deliver all the tough we need after it's been through the crusher. So if we put the stone block there, we'll put a post box here, right click on it and request tough. There we go, we want, I guess, one stack. Or is that just one? No, we'll go for 64. There we go. Now we add an andesite funnel. And does this connect? Oh my god, yes it does. Look at that. That is connected to the post box. So I think, in theory, if we go and add tough to the warehouse now, it'll get delivered. Although I saw the door open. Maybe someone's coming up here with some tough. Let's wait and see. Oh yeah, someone's coming up the ladder. This has to be the courier because who else would want to come up here? And it's Jacob Akizuki, the man, the legend. He is carrying our tough. Here we go. Automation. So Jacob's going to put the tough into the post box. It's in the post box and it's coming out the andesite funnel. Oh my god, it all works. This is perfect. So the tough goes up the conveyor belt. It's a rocky old journey and it's not the quickest of things, but it gets evenly split across all of these funnels. Well, kind of evenly. The most important thing is that one crushing wheel isn't overstretched. Wait, now what's going on here? The tough isn't going into the funnels. That's strange, why is that? Well, maybe we need to place down the item vaults again. That could work. Wait, one of them went through the crusher. Oh no, it's crushing. Oh no, it's crushing the item vault. So it looks like the item vault is lost to the ages. They're very cheap to make though. 
And we probably had a surplus. Yeah, just the one that's lucky. But it goes to show the schematics can is amazing, but it doesn't always put things down correctly. And sometimes you have to fix machines. So we're going to right click here. Yeah, and it looks like placing these down again has fixed the system. So the crusher is now, oh yeah, look at this. It's crushing these things up a dream. So we're getting loads of nuggets here. I can see already copper, iron, and gold. Amazing. Those nuggets are then filtered out of the item vault and onto these conveyors. Looks like the middle item vault works because we've replaced that as well. And once these basins get nine nuggets in total, they should begin to press the metal. But this is going to be a very slow process because, yeah, it's basically something that we want running over time. And every now and again, we'll come back here and collect ourselves some free metal. And here we go, the ninth gold nugget. Down comes the press. Slam. And are we going to get an iron nugget as well here into bars? Yeah, here we go. Boom, bars. Fantastic, and these feed all the way over to these chests where we can come and pick up the iron and gold and copper and zinc. That's super amazing. Wow, the system works. This is amazing. What we could do is just go here and, and say tough and ask for 999 or just put like loads of... Oh, yeah, yeah, look at this. So we can request a million tough. Now, I think whenever tough goes into the warehouse, it's going to get carted up here but only if we click deliver what's available otherwise the warehouse waits until it has like a million tough boom okay that's super amazing but what we wanted this episode is to get an infinite source of iron this is tough into many ingots but if we can get cobblestone into the crusher it'll turn into gravel and then if we wash the gravel the gravel will become iron nuggets and that's why we have this empty space over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend out this building a bit and we're going to add a bit of a washing setup. So here we go. It's pretty simple, but we've given this building a bit of an offshoot now. It's got like a nice peaked roof. And yeah, we can just basically carve up this area. Oof, now got to be careful because it is trying to tree fell the building. Always dangerous digging logs. And we'll do a bit of ulti mining here, just to make sure I'm not actually digging up the entire building. No, there we go, pretty good. And there we go, a nice open space now that we can work with. So we want to bring off a conveyor from this main item vault that's going to bring both the flint to trash and also, once we put cobblestone through the system, this is going to filter off gravel as well. I've got the water bucket and the encased fan, but I'm going to rely on... And a site funnel, they will need a brass funnel, I think. Borrow those shafts, maybe a cogwheel or two. Grab those stone bricks. And of course, those mechanical belts. And now we'll go and grab that brass funnel and maybe a tunnel as well. Yeah, a tunnel to filter off the flint. So here we go. And this whole thing should be very simple. We're going to get this brass funnel, plug it in at the top. But very quickly, we're going to set it to gravel because at the moment it's just trying to chuck everything out. So we're going to set the filter to gravel only, and this funnel should only output gravel. Now we want to bring this over via a conveyor belt. So we'll get the shafts out. No worries. There's point one. And the gravel is going to come all the way along this belt where it's going to be washed. And when it gets to the end, it goes into a chute and then into a chest. So we'll need, yeah, there's a chute. Got any chests as well? Yep, yeah, perfect. So there's the chute, and down here is the chest. Perfect. Now we're going to need a way to wash this. So this is where things get a little bit tricky. Is this going to be long enough to wash all the gravel that's coming out? I think it probably should be. There we go. Water in the top. Dig away these stone bricks. And yeah, so the fan should blow through the water. Wash the gravel. It goes into the chute. Now we need to finish the conveyor belt, like that. Drag over with a mechanical belt. Okay, we're almost ready. Now we need to hook the whole thing up. Now is this going to spin the right way? No, it doesn't. So we need to reverse that somehow. And we can do that by just adding another gearbox. 
There we go. Now it goes the right way. But the big problem we have now is we're going to need to get a lot of rotational force into this encased fan so it blows the water all the way along this conveyor belt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the power over from here and behind the building set up a pretty complex set of gears to get the maximum speed out of this fan. Oh man, yeah, look at the speed we're getting now. So we took off of this shaft here and through many different multiplicative and through many different multiplicative and through many multiplicative We used a lot of gears. We used a lot of cogs to get this spinning real, real quick. And now we can just bring a gearbox over and throw that power into the encased fan. Oh my god, this is so quick. And, fingers crossed, this is spinning the right way. Is it blowing or is it sucking? Oh no, this is sucking. That sucks. Not a problem though, because a gearbox here will fix all of our woes. And boom, so there we go. Everything is hooked up now. And, oh my god, yeah, look at this. These water bubbles are being blown all the way back here into the funnel. This, combined with the fact that the conveyor belt is a very slow speed, should get everything washed and into the funnel in time. But there's only one way to test this out. Let's deposit loads and loads of gravel. Now what we can do is we can also request gravel over here. We're going to ask for, let's say, a thousand gravel. Boom, and deliver what's available. Aha! Now one quirk with Deliver What's Available is you need to make sure you set the tick before you actually assign what you're putting in here. So we want gravel, we want 10,000 because we're going to need a lot of gravel. Boom! Yeah, 1 to 10,000 of gravel. Ah, yes! So it will deliver as much as it can whenever it comes in. And we can do the same for tough as well. Boom! 1 to 1,000 of tough. Now, there's no gravel in the system, but it looks like this guy is coming over with some tough. Oh, right, it's not gravel we want. No, it's cobblestone. That's right. There we go. One to one thousand of cobblestone. And, oh my god, this is bringing all the cobblestone from our warehouse. This could be a problem, but it's a problem for later because right now we're going to wait for this to happen. This should be fun. Now, in the meantime, we can kind of tidy things up. Basically, what I can do is I can bring these logs out a little bit further to hide all of these gears. And yeah, we can just basically just give this a bit of a wall and a window. Like this. No worries. And of course, a back wall as well. Oh, hello Toodles. Looks like he wanted to come along to take a look and see what we're doing. Hope he approves. In fact, speaking of Toodles, so Toodles is a member of the community who has been doing some great stuff over on our Discord server, and he's hosting a Halloween Minecraft competition where people are going to be trying to kill as many bosses as you can in a mod pack and build the coolest looking haunted mansion. So if you want to get involved with that, do pop on over to our Discord. And like I've said, there's usually a link to the Discord in the description. So where are these couriers? Because I can see that door opening and closing. These couriers are working, they're just not coming over here. Oh no, here we go. Here's number one. Ender Machief with our first delivery of cobblestone. Oh my god, wait, he teleported. Wow. I guess he is Ender Machief. And in it goes, and out comes the cobblestone. Now, to speed things up, we can also change this andesite funnel for a brass funnel. That's going to be much more efficient. Because a brass funnel can output more than one item at a time. There we go. Oh my god, yeah, look at those stacks coming out. Perfect. So the cobblestone is being turned into gravel. The gravel is coming out along this conveyor belt. The washer is washing it. And it looks like we're getting flint and... If we're lucky on occasion, a little bit of iron nuggets. Now the conversion rate for washing gravel into iron nuggets is not great. So it's mostly going to be flint. I think it's like 1 in 10. 
Oh yeah, here we go. We're getting our first iron nuggets. There's number one, if you can see through all of this uh, crazy water flying across the belt. But yeah, we've done it. Oh my god, mission accomplished. We have a factory now that turns tough into either gold, iron, copper or zinc and turns cobblestone into iron. Now what we could also do is set up like a stash over here by our cobble gen that means the couriers are always going to come over and pick up cobblestone whenever we make it and turn the cobblestone generator on. But we're not going to do that. Do you know why? Because if we're endlessly making cobblestone, endlessly delivering it over there to the factory, the problem we're going to have is all our couriers are ever going to do is deliver cobblestone. And that's going to be terrible. But this is really amazing news. This is a huge, huge moment. We've got an iron farm and also a copper, zinc, gold and iron nugget farm as well. So my dudes, a massive thank you for watching this episode of the Steampunk Saga. We're going to tidy up this building, get it looking all nice and find a way to filter off that flint so we can trash it into like lava or something. But this is really big. Now that we've got iron as a renewable resource on the colony, we can do two things. We can set all of our tools to be made with iron because now we have a renewable source of it. That's amazing. But also we're almost ready to move on to create railways. And that's really exciting. We are going to need to make a railway factory though because we're going to need a lot of rails. And also we need to build that crusher's hut so we can actually get the tough we need to get the other ingots over here. But a massive thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out the Discord server and until next time, take care.